<laughs> it's it's Michael. Michael, oh, you want me to? Do you want me to read from the book? Uh, Michael doesn't talk, but he sign language. Yes, yes, he wants me to read from the book. All right, Michael, you sit on my lap there, and the captain will read to you. Are you ready? By the time Snap crossed under the shadow of Hatchet Mountain, heading north, the other side of winter had come and gone. Signs of spring were giving way to rising heat of summer. He was on his way home. He knew he would suffer derision from his wolf pack, but he would live through it. He would have to be content with being a subordinate. If he didn't submit, he would be an outcast, a lone wolf forever. If he got lost, so what? In a way, he had been lost ever since he left Imnaha. Continuing to be lost was of no consequence. He knew he could survive. He could certainly find enough food to sustain himself until he reached home or wherever his wanderings took him. Silver puffs were blooming in prolific numbers on the northern slopes of Mount Dorn, where Snap chose to spend the night. As the moon rose, Snap lifted his husky voice at the big saucer and called out. But as had been the case in every other night on his journey, there was no answer. The next morning, he woke with a start. Before him, not a tail's length away, stood a giant eagle. Head cocked, one eye focused on Snap. It was Rusty. Rusty, you startle me, Snap complained. What's the matter with you? You know how I, well, how we wolves can be when we're startled. <laughs> Lucky I didn't attack you. I, I was watching your whiskers, Rusty chuckled. They give you away. Haven't seen you in an owl's age. Where have you been? Well, I went south, you know, looking, yeah, I know, looking for wolves. No luck, eh? Well, everything else but wolves. I decided, decided to go back to Imnaha Valley, back home. Say, hey, saw your mom a couple of moons ago. She asked about you. She did? Snaps asked excitedly. Yeah, yeah. You know how nature of, you know the nature of a wolf mom. <laughs> wow, Snap said. She asked about you, but I wouldn't get too excited. She has another litter of pups to care for. Not sure she needs to see you at all that much. Oh, Snap said, unable to hide his disappointment. Oh, but it makes sense, Rusty. It makes sense, Snap, explained Rusty. She's proud of you, certain you would find your own pack and become an alpha. Yeah, and I'm not, Snap said, dejectedly, looking at the dark clouds gathering in the west. She'd be ashamed of me. Oh, no, no, your mom's moved on, that's all. And so should you, Rusty counseled. Unashamed, Snap said almost to himself. Listen, listen, you got nothing to be ashamed of. It's not your fault there are no wolves here. Well, none almost anywhere anymore. You got to move on. You can be an alpha for yourself. And me. You can be my alpha, Rusty said. You think? No, what can I do for you? Well, be the best wolf you can be. That's all that's required of you. Be the best wolf you can be, and you be Snap Alpha Wolf, Rusty said, emphasizing Snap's name. The long journey is what I continue to be, Snap said, and dejectedly, thinking about the hundreds of miles he had traveled trying to find a mate. Well, that's where we're going to end, uh, Michael, today. So, hey, lads, go down and get a book, come up and read it. And read it to my Michael. That'd be good. All right, everybody? Good.